Yesterday night, there dropped reports that Eric Ten Hag is going to spend in excess of 200 million pounds. The sources where <clears throat> this story was coming in from were unclear. That's why I never came in here to really let you know about that 200 excess expenditure. And today, a story that's going to have to come in from Moloch Mira has going to have to confirm to us that Ten Hag has been kept in total darkness by the Glazers as far as the transfer window is really concerned. Good afternoon. How are you guys and where you watching us from i go by the names of rock and david united matters channel is the youtube channel and you know what we do here strictly man united the club that eric ten hag has gone ahead to turn around in a space of close to one year and things have gone ahead to change drastically we all believe that ten hag is the right man for the job and is taking us to the promised land smash the like button close to 200 times and don't forget to subscribe if at all you're watching us for the very first time because we want to hit 13,000 subscribers i know that's possible and god is going to make it happen and you people are being led by god all allah to the direction of the united matters channel now we are talking a little bit of Kim Inge. Some reports coming in from Italy confirming to us that United are into the race, but looks like Newcastle is trying to overtake United in that race. We are going to discuss that a little bit and really let you know our thoughts about it. And obviously, the replacement, the player that is going to part ways with Manchester United, and obviously create space for Kim Inge to come in through that is Harry Maguire has an update and teams that are really interested in him are really increasing day in day out that really increases our sample space and i'm happy to see to it that very many teams are really coming in for harry maguire let's start it off like this now moloch mira sorry is simon moloch has told us that eric ten hag is still being kept in the dark about Manchester United's future ownership. Sources close to him have confirmed that he has been given little information about the Glazer family intent to potentially sell. That is, that is Eric Ten Hag for you. Then, Moloch Mira continued to us that Eric Ten Hag works closely with Man United Director of Football, John Mota, but the Glazers are resolved to squeezing every single penny out of the potential sell after demanding a six billion to walk away so ten hag is totally being kept in the dark and keeping him in the darkness on the sale of the club is the same as keeping him in the darkness about his transfer window spend because he told us uh, when he was talking to via play i think it's a dutch outlet that when he was coming to Manchester United, the club promised him a huge spend, you know, even this summer. So he expects money to be available from the club to really help him spend. But you cannot come out and obviously anticipate how much United is going to spend in the summer transfer window because of the ownership uncertainty. And Tenag also knows it because that Glazers, <coughs> sorry about that, the Glazers that we know and the years we've known them for, <coughs> if they are willing to sell this club 100%, they aren't going to get a single penny and spend it. That's it. However, much rumor is there that United is having a budget of 100 million pounds to spend. I'm not going to be so much affirming that, not until I see us spending that amount of money. That's it. If the Glazers sell that club to Sheikh Jassim Althani, they'll walk out with 100 million pounds they've put up for spend. That's a given. That 100 million pounds will only be available for us to spend at the beginning of the transfer window if at all the Glazers sell the majority shares to Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Then Sir Jim Ratcliffe will come on and obviously add in like 100 or 150 million pounds. But that has all kept Eric Ten Hag in a total transfer darkness spend because right now we've seen teams already securing their deals. Look at Man City, look at Liverpool, they've gone in for Macalista. You know, they are soon getting that deal out of the way. Um, Real Madrid have already gone in for have already gone in for Judy Bellingham. I think they're going to make their bid either today or Monday as Borussia Dortmund lost their trophy to Bayern Munich after losing that game to Mainz. 
You know, look at uh, Barcelona. Total agreement has been agreed with Ruben Neves. You know, Arsenal is planning to make their first bid for Declan Rice, a player that even Eric Ten Hag is in love with. So, it shows you that the takeover is really going to cause a lot of uncertainty at Manchester United to an extent that that's why you see to it that players like Rashford, Dalo, Fred and David De Gea that Eric Ten Hag want to commit their long-time future to Manchester United have not put pen to paper because they are not certain of what is going to be happening at the club of Manchester United. So, the darkness is really covering Eric Ten Hag's world at Old Trafford because he wants players. He wants to get in players as soon as possible to travel with at least 70% of the players that he wants to America in the preseason to integrate them in the team and obviously see how they are going to fit in. You know, Casemiro struggled to get into that United team. It took him six games to fit to fit into that team. You know that very well. So, for Eric Ten Hag, he's a man that doesn't deserve such treatment by the Glazers. And this is really because of greed. An announcement that United was going to be up for sale, all investment, was put out in November. If you had to count <coughs> November, December, January, Feb, March, April, May, seven months of the Glazers trying to squeeze out every single penny, you know, they want. And we've been told again that Ten Hag is working closely with the director of football, John Mata. You know, however much he's working closely, but he is uncertain of how much is available because for the Glazers, they want to get six billion pounds out of Sheikh Jassim Al Thani. And the latest bid of Sheikh Jassim Al Thani was 5.5 billion pounds. That's it. So let's wait and see how this is really, really, really going to be. But the fact is, Ten Hag has been kept in total transfer darkness by the Glazers. They are polarizing his transfer window. That is the Glazers. And it's not all music to ears to we fans of Manchester United who know how a transfer window should go. Who know how good Eric Ten Hag is going to be and Manchester United if at all he's being backed on time. So that is it coming in from Moloch about the transfer darkness of Manchester United. And obviously the transfer darkness of Manchester United has led to the following. Kim In Jay. This is Bruno Andrade has to head us that Kimije is practically a sure name in the Premier League next season. Newcastle or Manchester United, both clubs have already said they will pay what Napoli asks for. The decision will be made in the hands of Kim. At first, at first, Newcastle have taken advantage. I understand why people are saying that Newcastle have gone ahead to take advantage. Do you know why? There is uncertainty on who is going to be the owner. You know, secondly, the budget of Manchester United is really unknown. Sometimes you feel a little bit excited when you're linked to Harry Kane, Mason Mount, Declan Rice, because that means the budget is going to be 200 million plus. Come in Kim In Jay, that is 250 million pounds plus, because Kim In Jay will go for 45 to 50 million pounds from Napoli. So, United have put in a lot of work in the Kiminje store in the Kiminje transfer. They started talking to his entry and scouting him in December last year. So six, seven months of Kiminje. I've watched him play. He's a very good player. But however much you've gone ahead to put in a lot of work, and we are the most attractive option to him, that doesn't downplay the efforts of Newcastle. <clears throat> Newcastle is into the Champions League. Furthermore, they have money. They can give Kim In Jay a salary that we cannot afford. <laughs> That's it. So, the only reason as, as I see Kim In Jay snubbing Newcastle for United is because of Eric Ten Hag. You know, the players we're having at Manchester United being world class would love to play alongside Casemiro, Rafael Varane. You know, Rafael Varane has been one of the best world defenders for the last decade. And maybe Kim In Jay would love to be playing alongside one of the world best players, you know. Having David De Gea in goal, celebrity goalkeepers, because you're having celebrity players, you know, playing with Marcus Rashford, Ericsson, and so on and so forth. Because on paper, when you look at the squad of Manchester United and Newcastle, which squad, if Kim In Jay comes in through, 
is going to thrive a little bit more in the Champions League, Premier League, and so on and so forth. It's Manchester United. Kimi knows it very well that if Atoli comes in at Manchester United, he's going to be played in the central defense and we are going to be competing for trophies. There is no assurance from Newcastle that next season they're going to be competing for trophies. I think they're going to be participating. I think they're not going to compete. In the Premier League, they might try to put out a competition, but in the Champions League, they are not going to find themselves competing because they might even find themselves in a fourth in the fourth port. So if at all you are put in the fourth port, that means you are going to be placed fourth. So you can find yourself in you can find yourself in a you can find yourself in a port that has Real Madrid, mm -hmm, Bayern Munich, and then Newcastle. Then you find there are RB Leipzig. So. Do you expect Newcastle to get out of that group? They can find themselves in another group that has Barcelona, Inter Milan, uh, okay, Barcelona, Napoli, Newcastle, and uh, maybe Ajax. So, it's going to be hard for them to go through. And if I'm keeping Jay, I'll contemplate on those options and then I'll make a decision of coming to Manchester United. I understand Newcastle also wants to put out stories to be relevant in the in the news, but I think the preferred destination of Kimin J is Manchester United. And the beauty of Kimin J, it's not that any team can get him out of Napoli in June. The rest for signing him is going to be between the 1st to the 15th of July. Meaning that the takeover process of United would have been done, will be stabilizing, will be knowing the amount of money that we are having, and negotiations for Kim Minji will be easy to be done because everything will be out of the way and it will be a clear path for United to negotiate the deal of Kim Minji. So I believe, however much, there is a chance for him to go to Newcastle, but I think it's minimal. It's not like that of Kim Inje to Manchester United, as we've put in a lot of work and Kim Inje and his entry are attracted to come in and play for a side like Manchester United. Lastly, let's talk about the player that Kim Inje will replace if at all he comes into Manchester United. That is Harry Maguire. When I saw this story, excitement was all over me as Inter Milan, Juventus, Milan, and Newcastle are all interested in signing Harry Maguire. Roma may emerge as a possibility and West Ham are likely to be sounded out. Sheffield is an, interest, is an interesting option, but could be financially impossible. Now, all my happiness from this deal arises from one thing. That is Harry Maguire leaving and having options increasing where he might be going to go ahead and really play the game next that is harry maguire for you when you look at harry maguire as a player you will understand that he's this kind of player who has always and always and always wanted to do things that his body cannot do he wants to be a fast defender but he can't he wants to be a very good game reader but he can't so he has fallen into the pecking order of eric ten Hag, and i think he last played a game for united in the premier league Oh, when was it? Looks like I was going to hate not to play the last 10 games of United. And uh, if I'm Harry Maguire, I would have been telling my entrance, let's really find ourselves out of this club of Manchester United and play a lot of other games elsewhere. But Newcastle coming in the mix, West Ham, Inter Milan, AC Milan and very many others is all what is making me happy because the more the suitors, the high chances of Harry Maguire leaving the club he has fallen in the picking order. If Kim Inje comes in through, he's going to be a sixth choice, a sixth choice center back at Manchester United. And a player who wants to play in the Euros of 2024 needs to find himself a place where to play. And I think it's one of the discussions that Harry Maguire is going to hold with the England national team manager, that is Gary Southgate, as far as his future is concerned. This season, he has not gone ahead to play very many games for Manchester United, though he was taken to the World Cup and played all the games in the World Cup. But 
next season, if he continues to be a bench player, I think the likes of Guichi, who are really playing for Crystal Palace and are being, are being wanted by teams like Arsenal, might really get ahead of him if at all Harry Maguire doesn't find himself in the starting positions of a team next season. So guys, your thoughts on Ten Hag in total transfer darkness? And those are the glazers keeping him in total transfer darkness are welcome in the comment section below tell me what are your thoughts about kim in jay that newcastle have now taken a lead in the transfers and lastly what do you think about harry Maguire? possible destination options increasing in a nick of time i cover you all in the precious blood of jesus christ i sign out for now see you later ciao ciao i'm returning with the match day live as we take on fulham at Old Trafford. Bye-bye.